day because a mobile phone is uh, very versatile, it's very small and it's very, you know, discreet. From shooting with a mobile phone, attending Nairobi's intermits early in his profession, and then discovering the world of photography, Paul Kidero shares his story from a smartphone, DSLR, photography, and now on another adventurous path in video. Join me, Obuyanaza and we see how he has toured the world through photography. My name is Paul Kibero. Um, I am a photographer and a filmmaker uh, with an interest in uh, portraiture and uh, urban lifestyle. Really, it's a really interesting story how I got into photography. I have, uh, it was in 2014 when I had just joined uh, college and uh, it was around that time when Insta meets, which are uh, gatherings of photographers to take photos wherever in the city and upload them to Instagram under a certain hashtag. That's when they were just starting to, you know, gain popularity. And my friend Collins was like, he, he kept telling me about them. You know, he kept telling me, Paul, we need to go for these Insta meets. It's gonna be cool, it's gonna be fun. But I didn't, I really didn't have as much interest because I really didn't know what it was about. But eventually he convinced me and we went for the, I think, third or fourth Insta meet that happened in Kenya at uh, the Go Down Art Centre in April of 2014. And uh, the minute we got there, it's like someone flicked a switch. And uh, from there it just went, it went on as a, a hobby until I decided that I wanted to make it my full-time, uh, my full-time career. Between the mobile phone and the camera, well, uh, when I when I when I started photography, when I when I started uh, my journey into photography, I used a phone primarily because I did not have a camera. And uh, for a good six months, I was shooting on a phone, and I think it really helped me. Uh, it helped uh, define how I. Uh, how I do my work today because a mobile phone is uh, very versatile, it's very small and it's very, you know, discreet. And, and that's what I liked doing. I did a lot of candid shots, like in town or uh, let's say in the mall, wherever. The first major exciting assignment that came to me was about three months, three or four months after I got my first camera. And uh, what happened is, I was, you know, I was, I was sitting at home in front of the telly just watching TV, and this advert popped up, uh, talking about how you could uh, win an opportunity to work with MTV on the Mamas, Mama Awards in South Africa. And I was, uh, you know, at that time, I, I could have said that, you know what, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to uh, follow this up because uh, they, I, there's a very big misconception that there are only certain kinds of people who will these opportunities. So I did not think like that. I decided I was going to sign up for the competition and see where it, where it went because at the time I really believed that uh, I, I wanted to go places with my work. I wanted it to be uh, the main motivating factor in my life. And it did turn out that uh, they liked the photo I submitted and I got the opportunity to go to South Africa and work with the production team 
uh, on the red carpet to do the images for social media. I went to Malaysia in, uh, towards the end of 2015 to uh, work with Airtel on uh, a campaign called Faces of Airtel. So what happened is they, they held an Insta meet in Nairobi where it was at the Railway Museum, I think, yeah. And uh, the, the, the prize was if you had the best photograph, they would take you to Malaysia for about a week and you would uh, get to work on, uh, you know, you would get to uh, be set loose, so to speak, in the city to shoot whatever your heart desire for a week. And uh, I went for the Insta Meet because, uh, you know, after the Mamas, I realized that the only way you'll ever get anywhere is if you kept trying and trying. You'll try, you'll fail some, you'll win some. And that was the mentality that I had, and I still do. So, as uh, you know, as good fortune would have it, I managed to get this opportunity and go to Malaysia for a week. And I had, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun there. I, you know, I, I created amazing work, and I met I met fantastic people. Well, my my parents, uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> my parents were very, uh, they were very supportive. And they still are. Of course, at first, any by the, if your if your child comes up to you and says that you know I want to do this and that, as a parent, I think you have to evaluate, you know, from your perspective, whether you think that your child is up for it and is going to see it through to the end. So I think after the first few uh, jobs and uh, trips that I went for, they you know they got to the to the mindset that he's serious about it. He wants to do this, and uh, we'll support him as he goes along. And so I think I managed to, in that way, I convinced them that I was serious about photography. One of the things that really uh, disturbs me about how the industry is here in Kenya is, is uh, the fact that it's relatively difficult to, uh, to go and uh, take photographs in the city. Because I am an urban photographer, urban lifestyle photographer. I like going out into the city to, you know, experience it and uh, share what I see. And, you know, if I want to use the city as my backdrop, you know, that would be the best place to be. But because of uh, either the rules and uh, the laws, it's very difficult to uh, shoot freely in the city because, of, uh, because the police will really bother you and that's not something that's something that i would love to see change in the coming years and i'm sure the work that pak uh, is doing with the you know the lawmakers is going to be instrumental in ensuring that um, ph photographers have a very conducive environment to operate within early this year uh, I decided that I wanted to expand my uh, the, 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 sort, the kind of work that I do, not, to, not limited just to photography. So I decided to start you know, learning about filmmaking and uh, videography. And I can say that um, it has been a very interesting journey so far. I am working on a bunch of interesting projects that will come to the fore very soon. And uh, I think that as photographers, you know, it's, not, it's very important to, to widen your scope as much as possible. You know, you could, just, you could just, you know, be interested in photography, that's fine. But you need to learn about the other disciplines that surround photography so that you can appreciate your craft more and even learn different ways in which to execute your work. In the next few months, I'd like to uh, hold my first exhibition. And, uh, you know, since it's something I've never done before, I think it will be a very interesting challenge to put all these elements together and uh, to ensure it's a success. I plan on it just being a collection of the work that I've done so far and uh, to, you know, launch my career further. <laughs> 
so to speak, to the world. Yes, I could, I might probably do it uh, solo or with a, a group of uh, my friends who are also photographers.